Okay. Well, welcome everyone. And I appreciate everyone being here today with us. Uh, many thanks to Maxwell, who is going to be our co-host today and help get people in the room. Uh, my name is Melissa Sherry, and I'm going to do a, a little deeper dive introduction on myself. But in the meantime, I do want to um, tell you a little bit about the Michigan Community Service Commission and how these trainings came about. So I'm the volunteer impact coordinator for what is the Michigan Community Service Commission. We are the state organization that is the lead on volunteerism. So we work with state within state government. We have lots of roles. We work with AmeriCorps. We also work with um, a number of really awesome mentoring organizations and uh, bring resources to strengthen those mentoring organizations throughout the state. And then we have a disaster wing and we also have a um, volunteerism wing. And so um, those two arms I'm pretty heavily involved with. And uh, we respond to disasters in the state by mobilizing volunteer resources and donations management. And then on the, uh, the volunteer end, we have something called the Volunteer Generation Fund. And that was a that was a grant that was given to the state of Michigan through AmeriCorps, the agency. And we've received one of the largest ones in the history of the Volunteer Generation Fund. And our goal is to be able to bring some resources to you, free resources, such as some free volunteer management software, uh, training such as this, and then also uh, partnering with our partners throughout the state, which I'm going to show you in just a second who they are. Uh, these are really backbone organizations. Um, uh, I'm going to go right to it now. Uh, these are backbone organizations in many communities. And a few of these, as you'll see, like the Johnson Center for Philanthropy, the nonprofit network, they have really a statewide uh, presence. Now, some of these are also um, not only capacity building organizations like United Ways, but many of those United Ways also have volunteer centers connected to them. And I can tell you, I've worked with every single one of these very closely, and they are incredible uh, in terms of trying to bring resources to, to you to help. So if you haven't connected with your local United Way, your local volunteer center, please, please do. They offer some really great resources that as someone who's been in volunteer management a long time, I think I would have appreciated these. So these are our partners. In addition, I want to note to you that many of our future trainings will be brought to you by these organizations. Last month, we had Four County Community Foundation, our second one here, uh, they actually presented on grant making for nonprofits. And I do have that recording. We can send it out and share it, things like that. And it'll exist on our, our YouTube page. Let me go back here for just a moment. So our um, what our goal is, is to every month provide two trainings. And these are always free to nonprofit organizations. They are on volunteer management and nonprofit capacity building. And someone said louder and clear. I'm going to see if it'll help if I turn this up. Maybe you can hear me a little bit more. And I do have one of those voices, so I apologize. Uh, so we also are hosting these networking sessions that happen pretty, um, it, it happened once a month. And then our next one will be March 10th at one o'clock. And it will be on the topics of volunteer management. It'll be on um, volunteer recognition and how to relaunch your volunteer program. So, uh, which was a previous one that we just, we just completed, a training that we just completed. So you're all invited to that. I will send out all the slides. I will send out the um, some additional materials at the end that support this training today. And you'll get those um, within a day or two, I think. So with that, I'm going to launch our first poll. This is this is just an introductory poll, just to tell you, you know, find out a little bit more about you, where you're at, things like that. And while you're doing that, let me do my introductions. I'm Melissa Sherry, and I've been in volunteer management for close to 26 years now. And I've worked in organizations that have a huge budget, a little budget. We've been grassroots. I've been, you know, the, you know, we've been 
I've been in a lot in a number of different positions and enjoy different things about each one. But one thing that really excites me is always about volunteer recognition. And I want to talk about that in terms of maybe some different different ways to see it. But long story short, I'm delighted to be here with you today. I've been with the commission for a little more than a year and a volunteer um, impact as a volunteer impact coordinator. I've been doing a lot with disasters in the last year. Unfortunately, we had a lot of natural disasters with the flooding in Southeast Michigan, that and harbors water crisis that they've dealt with. And then also had the pleasure of uh, working on those national days of service, which by the way, if you haven't heard about those, we have Global Youth Service Day coming up in the spring and we provide some, some partner support. So the whole idea here is, is that we're also trying to build a network of volunteer uh, administrators. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit and this poll and share this with you. It looks like you wanna come, many of you wanna come away with some ideas to improve your volunteer recruitment or recognition. Uh, that's awesome. And then many more of you want to learn how to align recognition for higher uh, engagement. And so fair enough, that's awesome. I think that's terrific. We are gonna cover those things today. I'm gonna to stop sharing that. Okay. Ah, oh, boy, I am hot on this. On the, on the slides today. So let's talk about our learning objectives. We're gonna talk about the impact of recognition. And we're gonna talk about why do we recognize volunteers? And we are gonna talk about aligning recognition with motivations, with volunteer motivations. And then how do we increase and enhance engagement through a culture of recognition? And then valuing those traditions that we've had. And then how do you sustain all these things? It's not easy. You're in a, in a pretty tough position. Uh, organizations really do depend on each one of you as their volunteer administrators to be able to bring in the resources that they need to succeed. So it's tough, but I've got some ideas for you after having been in this a long time. And then uh, we do have um, we do have some uh, things to share. I'm going to send that out, Kimberly, um, with the training uh, from last week. I'll send that out today. Uh, so here's a couple of things. There was a study in Canada about um, volunteer recognition. And so did you know that, you know, 80% of volunteers just want to be thanked by hearing how their efforts made a difference? Sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Uh, the good news is most organizations do actually provide in-person and informal thanks. That is great news. That is absolutely great news. 70% of those uh, volunteers just want an in-person or informal thanks. They're not looking for a banquet. They're not looking for pins. They're not looking for things like that. Uh, but then we have a big disconnect. 70% of organizations also provide letters of recommendation. When volunteers were asked, you know, what is the highlight of the things that they're doing? They found that um, this came in second to dead last. And 60% of organizations provide a formal banquet to volunteers to say thank you. But this one actually came in dead last. Now, I don't want to tell you, get rid of your banquets, but I think it is food for thought that it is, um, it is something to think about, that it is not the most um, effective uh, way to say thank you. So you need other ways, but traditions are good and we're gonna talk about that too. So what does the research say about recognition? And I wanted to throw this in because I felt like it was really pretty important here. There was a survey done by the John Templeton Foundation and it talked about gratitude. 50% of Americans regularly express gratitude to family members. However, only 15% do, do to their colleagues. But yet nearly all respondents said that they wished that they had more recognition and feedback from their peers and others. Do you, so my question to you is, do you ever feel like you have too much recognition in your own life? Like there's just, my bucket is so full that I just don't need any more. This is just too much for me. And, and the answer is probably, you're probably laughing a little bit and, uh, and saying no. <laughs> and so, um, but you know, when, why we're sharing this, and this is within a work setting, but being able to 
appreciate each other in a work setting has, has an ability to translate to greater productivity. That they're saying that actually um, when there is a culture of gratitude in the workplace or a culture of recognition, that there's a huge increase by as much as 50% more of a productivity increase. That's incredible. That's incredible that people will bring more of themselves to work and that they will work harder for an organization, for a mission, for each other and be there for each other when they feel that, that they're appreciated. So and I want you to think something else about um, the sense of appreciation. And I have a little story to tell you that we're going to come back to. I have a cousin who is somewhat of a new business owner. He has a rock crushing business here in the state of Michigan. And he was talking to me uh, maybe a year or two ago about his employees. And this always seems to be kind of a I think he cares a lot about his employees. I think he cares a lot about his business and he wants people to be happy. Well, some of the things that he was doing to make people happier is he was trying to pay them more. And I said, well, why do you think that that makes a big difference? And he goes, well, I mean, wouldn't money just be the end? I mean, everybody works for money. So, you know, pay him more. And I said, but what happens when you pay him more? Do you find that at some point that doesn't matter anymore? And he goes, yeah, that's the problem. Well, that is essentially the problem because after a while, you're going to spend that raise or you look at that raise as what is due to you. You look at, um, you look at that bonus, it gets spent on whatever you're, you know, and you move on, right? And you kind of forget. Well, that's the same thing. Uh, and so we're going to talk about what, is lasting and what isn't lasting. So one, and I'm gonna come back to, to my cousin in a, in a few slides here, but that sense that um, people feel appreciated and valued is what sticks with them most. So with that, oops. So why do we recognize our volunteers? You know, for many, uh, and, and there's no wrong answer, but here's a, a number of things. You know, we want to show appreciation. It's the right thing to do. We want to honor them. Uh, you know, it's it's expected. It's part of our culture. All these things are just fine. I mean, they're fine. But when you can help a volunteer feel a part of the team, when you can um, when you can create engagement, when you can create that sense of belonging, when you create that personal connection. That is really in true recognition and volunteers do respond to this, but it's not, it's not a given in every organization, but it's something that can be created. So here's some questions to consider, and there are no wrong or right answers in this, but does your current volunteer recognition program weight towards intrinsic uh, rewards. These are like gifts and parties. If you want to use the chat, I'd love to hear from you here. Um, or does your program lean towards intrinsic values? And these intrinsic values are the things that are not a mug. It is not a, um, it's not a thing. It's more of a feeling. It's it's that ongoing appreciation for volunteers, that reward that comes from, uh, you know, giving giving more um, more opportunity to grow, and they considered it multidirectional. So what they mean by that is it can go in a lot of different ways. Um, extrinsic is one directional; it goes in one way. You give them the mug, and it's done. Uh, you give them a gift card, it's done. But those, those, when there's an intrinsic value, it's often evident in a culture of recognition. And we're going to talk about what a culture of recognition is. It tends to be ongoing and the reward comes from, you know, giving them more work, more opportunities to grow. It can go in a lot of different ways. I love this. Yeah. And you know what? There's not, I mean, I, I have done this a lot too with um, the and extrinsic rewards, uh, they can, they tend <laughs> to be more on your, um, on your back to, 
do for them. So we're going to talk about what that means and things to consider uh, when you're when you're thinking about that. So in those intrinsic rewards and that culture of recognition and appreciation and value, uh, it's wonderful if you've if you've got this going. I mean, I commend you. I led a very I've at times led a very large volunteer program. I couldn't have possibly known everyone. And we started out with a very, um, we rewarded people for things that were more on the longevity side with service awards. We rewarded things, we rewarded people with things. So I'm gonna talk about that now for a few minutes and then um, talk about what it looks like um, as a culture of recognition. And this is what, when I was talking to my that cousin with that rock crushing business that you're like, what does that have to do with volunteerism? People are people and they wanna feel valued. How do you help them feel valued? So recognition starts from the top down. And I, you know, we have incredible nonprofit leaders in, in the state of Michigan. I know we do. My challenge to you would be to go back and have a conversation with your leader about creating a culture of appreciation and recognition if, if you feel like it needs some help. We also have some uh, uh, materials that we're going to hand out. One of them is from uh, Beth Steinhorn. Uh, she's going to present to us later on in the year. And um, she's, she's a phenomenal speaker, a national speaker. And she's going to help us with some things later on down the road. And um, but we'll be able to, we'll be able to talk more about those, but I've got it. That is one thing I want to share with you. So this expectation of gratitude is also a trained skill. So even if you're not really good at it, it's something you learn. It's something your staff can learn. Uh, you know, it should be in, in a lot of times in a truly in a culture where this is very evident it's written in staff job descriptions and they have training on it. And what is, what is showing gratitude, appreciation and recognition look like? Um, the thanks and the gratitude is often shared in the moment and it's usually informal. It's like at that moment. I did have one time, um, we did volunteer surveys and actually there is a survey that is in that toolkit that I'm gonna to share with you. And it was interesting because we did some follow-up on the survey. And I remember one very powerful thing that a college student said to me, you know what? The best thing that would happen to me as a volunteer for this organization is if when I walked in the door, someone said, hey, Kelly, good morning or good afternoon, whatever it is. And I'm so glad you're here. That would have made her day. That's the best recognition she could have received. And that sounds really simple, doesn't it? I mean, you know, I think in small organizations, that's pretty easy a lot of times to, um, to achieve. But in large organizations, it's, sometimes it's not. So think about that and think about Kelly. And she just needed someone to tell her, you know, I'm glad you're here. Uh, so uh it's and it's also very very often staff to staff, volunteers to staff, and volunteers to volunteers, and also with recipients. So it's multi again multi directional, and it exists in a way that you know there there's things that are built in. I worked with um, an organization in in Charlotte, Michigan. It's um, they have a star program, and. They do this thing where staff are expected to write up on another staff about like, you know, like I caught you in the moment of good things and, and they can even write about themselves. It's totally okay. You know, if I work there and I wrote, I put towels out for the guests or I refilled the water pitcher. Um, sounds like easy things, right? But if you say, hey, you know, my, um, my work partner always make sure that, you know, there's coffee in the coffee pot uh, for us when we come in in the morning. And think about how powerful that is to be able to um, recognize that person for something. It, it seems little, but it's probably big to someone. <laughs> uh, so think about that. And so they would do these, the STAR program and people would, the staff would say, 
uh, the, the leader would say, hey, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to go through the STAR program. And, and I saw that you put something in um, Max and Max is going to read it about, you know, who, whoever it's about, if it's about Adrian, um, she's, he's going to read it and she's going to get recognized in front of everyone. I think those things are also very powerful and they're easy. And then they also had this thing about um, for a new employee within their first 90 days, and this was part of helping them understand that idea of a culture of gratitude and recognition that they uh, would have to do a testimonial. And this is not a religious organization or anything like that, but they would, they would say, you know, I want you to talk about the culture that you have found here and talk about how you're going to make a difference in the culture. That is a big delivery for a staff person to do, you know, they, they have to do this in their first 90 days of just trying to get a, uh, uh, you know, accommodated to the organization. But think about that in terms of what it could do for a culture and how you can make changes in a culture. And so to, to that extent, even with volunteers, that, that extends to them. And if they find that they're feeling like they're belonging, that they have things, a meaningful work to do, ways to give, and they're seeing the outcome of, their, of the work that they're doing, those are, that's how you kind of begin to tie it up. Um, another thing too, is that it can also be very, it should, uh, these kind of cultures are also very inclusive. And for a volunteer that can mean including them in a staff meeting, doing things like inviting them to be a part of a presentation with you. I mean, that's huge, isn't it? Uh, you kind of certainly think about those things as being something for a staff member to do. But if you can bring a volunteer, one, that volunteer voice lends a lot of credibility. And then two, it's also just a part of um, those opportunities for growth for volunteers. But again, you have to also look at who would like to do that? I've known volunteers, and if I asked them to do that, I think it might have put them over the edge. But I have other volunteers that they were craving that kind of opportunity. So you have to look at those motivations. But in the end, these kind of teams tend to be more productive. And I think that's uh, worth, worth talking about because, hey, I mean, we need people who are more productive. Every one of your agencies it never has... Has, has achieved your mission or you wouldn't be here today, right? So uh, as we move on, oops. So aligning recognition with volunteer motivations. I think it's worth talking about that too. So there's different kinds of motivations. And if you think about who your volunteers are, you may be able to think about who like aligns in each one of these buckets. So there's social uh, motivations. These are people who wish to make friends and feel connections with others. The combating loneliness is a huge factor in our, in our society. It has been absolutely traumatizing for a lot of people to, to be shut off from their networks of people because of the, the pandemic. So looking for ways to help people feel those and sustain those social connections is huge. And you can probably think about the people that volunteer for you, who this may, may apply to. And perfectly okay. This is probably not someone who's going to want to go do a joint presentation with you, uh, but they have, their, they have their roles and they do a great job in your organization. Uh, gaining exposure. These are people that want to gain understanding, um, knowledge, skills, abilities. They want to they wanna understand what the... Um, the issues are that, you know, um, um, I know Max is from one of the food kitchens. Um, you know, what, what's behind hunger? Why, why do we have hunger in our, in our society? Why do we have hunger in America? Um, so gaining understanding and then also building on skills, knowledge, and abilities. Um, there's folks that need enhancement. I mean, these are people that need to improve their self-esteem. And I have worked with a lot of these people and it's incredible how people blossom. I had a lady that I worked with and she was the shyest person. I mean, she was just like a wallflower, very much 
I thought a huge introvert and I don't think she was. Uh, and so, but she had a lot of computer skills and she started helping one of our volunteer groups and really became very knowledgeable about some of their computer systems that they had. She had worked um, in her professional life and retired and felt kind of cut off and kind of kind of honestly down on herself. And she began uh, this work and she was training other people, helping other people build up their knowledge and their abilities. And she was always, you know, she just blossomed into this different person who is really an extrovert. And here I, I had her all wrong. I thought she was, you know, just someone who really at first didn't want to be around people. And, um, and so she, but she blossomed and I love that. Um, a, pro, a protective motive, it's an escape. How many people have you worked with that were like a caregiver at home? They were someone, um, I've, I've worked with lots of older women who were also their husbands. Unfortunately, their health wasn't that great. And they were oftentimes the, um, they were oftentimes the people who uh, were taking care of them. And so this was their break. This was their way of escape. I had a lot of uh, our volunteers that I, like I said, at one point I worked in a healthcare setting and they love babies and they didn't have babies anymore. And so this was like completely an escape where they could hold a baby and provide love and cuddling and things like that. Um, values, you know, a lot of board members are like this. They want to express their altruistic and humanitarian beliefs uh, through board service and um, being able to help in a, in providing direction and things like that and providing a uh, lending their, their skills and their support and their networks. Uh, that's one way to think about it. And then we have a lot of career people who are looking for exploring career opportunities. You might also say that those are people that are also gaining exposure too. I worked with a lot of younger people who are early in their career or um, exploring, like going back to school and, and, you know, going into a different field, things like that. Before they did that, they wanted to kind of get some exposure. And so these are ways that if you think about who these folks are in, in, that, you've, that you've come across or as you meet people, and you can kind of begin to think about ways that would um, motivate them and ways that you can help them increase their, their engagement. So everyone's reason for volunteering is different. They vary as greatly as people do, but by and large, they fall into these. There's also probably some power people in there too. And, and definitely those people are gonna be people who are gonna to love to help you with that presentation. So think about that. So we know now what volunteers want from recognition. What do you want from recognition? What do you want? What do you need? You know, I've been in your position for a long, long time. And generally I can probably sum it up with these things. Um, and, and at some point when you begin to really get things going, it's not all on you to provide these outlets for, to fulfill people's motivations. It can be more intrinsic to the work. And then you ultimately end up getting more out of it too. So obviously we want them to stay. We want to retain volunteers. We want them to be happy and engaged. We want them to be positive advocates for our organization who say good things about us and help us and give of themselves in ways that um, we you know, might not expect them to on day one. So um, we want them to be there to help us through tough problems that we're having. You know, Many of your organizations have fared beautifully and you've done beautifully during this pandemic when the demand for services has increased so much. But yet on the other hand, you've had unique challenges that no one saw coming. You know, when you, you know, a pandemic that you can't be near people, it's sort of the, um, the opposite of what volunteering does when it brings people together. So, but you've done an awesome job. And I do want to acknowledge that because I, I think that you've learned a lot, you've grown a lot, and it's pretty amazing. 
uh, you want volunteers, you, you want volunteers to be able to count on them when we need them. And for many of your organizations, you found that out, your volunteers, as much as they were able to, they, they, you could count on them. Uh, you want volunteers to feel like a partner in delivering that mission. You want volunteers um, to align, volunteer recognition to align with our goals and our strategy. You know, that's kind of like it goes back to, if you've been with me through previous sessions, things like um, positions, you know, sometimes we have to let go of things. And, you know, we want volunteers to be able to go with the flow, move forward, move in this new direction. And sometimes that is hard for volunteers, but that's what we want from them is some flexibility. We want volunteers to give us feedback. You know, we have blind spots in, um, oh, excuse me. We have huge blinders that we'll never know unless we ask them. We want honest feedback and we want those volunteers to give of themselves in many, many ways. So it's a tall order, isn't it? And so what's the secret? So there's three things, and you've heard me say this if you've been uh, with me through other trainings, a sense of belonging. They need opportunities to contribute and they need opportunities to grow and develop. So what do these kind of things look like? So belonging is like ownership. They want to have a voice at the table. They want to be valued. They want to be recognized for being there, but more so than just being there, they also want meaningful feedback on those impacts that they've made. And opportunities to contribute, it's meaningful work. We should look at every opportunity that, that comes our way and really think about is, if this is something that you would want volunteers to do. I was once asked if I would have volunteers go out and um, scrape the windshields of employees' cars for them. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to ask someone to do that. And I, and I turned it back to them and I said, how meaningful would that be if, uh, I'm going to let somebody in here, um, how meaningful would that be if that was your job? And, and there wasn't anything tied behind it, like how it tied with the mission. And so there are elements of every role that are probably not ideal. Uh, you know, it might have a cleaning opportunity or, you know, something like that. But when it's packaged well and there is good, you know, a sense of how it's connecting to the mission and it can provide meaningful work, then you'll probably find a volunteer who can do that and, and um, be able to uh, include them. Those opportunities to contribute also talk about advancement. And so, and then having a voice. And those things are like, you know, the feedback, being able to really and truly be able to um, be a part of the organization, be there for staff meetings, be there for planning meetings. And when it comes to opportunities to grow and develop, you know, it's things that, um, it's things about re-recruiting them. Uh, I've talked about that before too. When you talk about re-recruiting someone, it, it's kind of like, and a lot of volunteer programs are doing this where they're looking at positions, not like for the next 10 years, they're looking at positions for a project. Okay, you know, this project's coming to an end. You've helped us with, you know, these three goals that we had and it's really coming along well. How would you feel about this? And, and you know, we're gonna, we're gonna help you. Um, you know, it might be something like they need computer skills or it might be someone who needs um, background information on um, your hiring practices or your finances, things like that. So to expand their skills and give them new work, you have to be able to give them the training and the background information and the support for it to be successful. But, you know, give them a voice to be able to, um, to learn uh, learn those new skills. I think that is absolutely huge. And I can honestly say in many of my past positions, we really worked on how do you build their skills for, for teenagers, teen vol youth volunteers. A lot of times it was just that self-esteem, being able to help them feel comfortable talking to a stranger. 
uh, you know, a lot of adults have that problem too, but a lot, a lot of teens have that, that, you know, that insecurity about themselves. The other thing is with our college students, for example, they were looking for opportunities to learn and grow and they wanted to, to see things. Well, we can't let them see things that they're not really ready for. And there's no concept of, um, you know, a procedure or something like that, but we can connect them with experts. They can go to lectures, they can, you know, um, be a part of a planning, uh, a, a new program, things like that. Those things I think were absolutely huge. Um, okay, uh, yeah, so, um, so as we're looking at this, what are some ways that we can foster engagement and recognition? You know, the belonging, Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I just realized something. This is only letting me, the chat is, let me look at the chat here for a second. These are only, I thought that the chat, we've got some, something is set up on the chat. And I think it just changed for me, but hopefully when you put something in the chat, now you, everyone can see it. So what are some ways that we can foster engagement and recognition? Uh, belonging is, is a way, uh, as we're talking about it, assigning a mentor, um, you know, someone who can help someone when they're new, that will, will bring them along and will be there to support them, I think is absolutely huge. This is also a, a great uh, opportunity for a new volunteer. You know, being ready and welcoming them, uh, you know, it would be kind of terrible for a person to show up and, and one, not be ready for them, or two, um, forget that they're coming today. And then touch base frequently when they're new. Some of the things that I would do is I would make sure that I touch base with them at critical points. For us, what made sense in, in a position that I'm thinking about that I held at, at two weeks, at um, six weeks, and at 90 days we would do different touch bases. The first one would make sure that we'd make sure training was scheduled or if training had occurred, we're just touching base on that. We're making sure that things are good. And then at six weeks, we would make sure that they had hours and then we would reach out, um, find out why they hadn't started or if they had started, you know, what, you know, what has been their experience so far. And then at 90 days, we began asking them, for feedback. And we were really honest with them that we would say, we are gonna kind of at different times ask you for a lot of feedback. And, and we expect you to be a part of this. And we would do things where our team would go around and we would we would do what we call rounding, where, which is visiting them. And we would ask some very purposeful questions in a with a positive angle. And that would talk about, um, you know, like what, what ideas do you have for improvement? Uh, what ideas do you have for improvement? What ideas do you have that, that would make things work better around here? And I, I, I think that that was something that really helped. Um, and then creating opportunities for socialization. Some are easier than others because of the pandemic. But as we can think about that, whether it's small groups that they can get on a Zoom together, that, uh, you know, I would have a group that back when we were in person, one of the gals would, uh, she was a really good baker. I always thought this was funny. I met a friend of hers that she was in an exercise class with. And she always said that, um, he said, that this lady always brought the dessert to the exercise class. <laughs> she was really good at baking. So I don't think anyone ever turned down her baked goods. So, um, but I always thought that was funny. And she would do the same thing with her little work group. And it would always make, that food would always bring people together and they loved it. So, um, but I just, I laugh about that because I thought that was funny. But again, making it fun, she always made it fun. And she was responsible for that. That was her role in the group. And uh, when you saw those kind of things happen, I just thought that was always really cool because people love working on that day. And it was primarily because of her and the things that she was doing. Uh, you know, those opportunities to, to contribute. 
Having a progression ladder for volunteers is important. You know, a brand new volunteer doesn't come in with the idea of, hey, I'm gonna make it to, you know, become a board member for the organization or a committee member or something like that. But having that, that progression where, you know, you can have them help, help with the planning for an event you can have them train other volunteers. You can have them help with, um, or you know, really lead uh, the the efforts on documenting policies and procedures. Those things are absolutely huge, and that's how it becomes more of a shared responsibility with the volunteers, and not necessarily with you. Mm. The other thing is asking for um, feedback and knowing what their skills are in calling them, you know, to use them. So we had an accountant and um, in our midst, and uh, I would very oftentimes call on her for different groups that were having trouble with their financial statements or, you know, something like that. But then I also had a writer who was so awesome at proofing things. He had been an editor in, of a newspaper. And so it was, I mean, I was an English major, but I'm not perfect. Uh, and it was like, well, I'm just going to turn that over to him. I can, I can get more done by utilizing his skills. And he's perfectly happy to do it. And so calling them out on those for those particular skills, or if there's something that they want to develop. But it takes, you know, planning and being purposeful in making those asks and finding out what it is that those skills are that the volunteers have. But they love those jobs. I mean, I, you know, every volunteer I can think of that I gave them an extra job to do, uh, they, they loved it. And it was something that would uh, perpetuate itself into engagement. And they, were, they felt like they had a belonging there. And then asking, uh, you know, provide a voice for volunteers in your organization. I was really delighted that eventually what happened in one of my jobs is that they realized on their board and their committees that they weren't, they were just kind of always using the same person and they always needed, they, they realized they needed a new voice. And so they came to me and they said, hey, can you help us recruit new committee members? Can you help us recruit? And so we can um, recruit new committee members and task force members. And then what we're going to do is we're going to train them and eventually those are going to be board members. And so they would tell me kind of, you know, who they were looking for. They would say, hey, you know, we want a mom. You know, this was a hospital. We want a mom. We provide a lot of services to moms. We don't have any new moms on our, on our committees. And it was a big deal. I mean, we delivered 4,500 babies a year, but no one in, from that population was representative on those committees who are making decisions on behalf of those new moms and dads. So um, we got some new moms, we got some dads that were parents. Uh, we did started doing things very differently. But again, it was a progression, it was a step up for, for people and an opportunity to get people back and engaged in having a board that was reflective of the community that they served. We worked very hard on making sure that we had people that English wasn't a first language. We are uh, fortunately, and it's, I think it's a gift in my community, we were a very diverse community. So think about those things and think about how you can use those opportunities where they can contribute. Um, and then also opportunities to learn. This can be education sessions. Think about the education sessions you have for your staff. Why not include volunteers? Uh, you know, new training. A lot of times training can be like these trainings. I mean, they're free. Open them up to volunteers. We'd love to have them. Uh, and then learning new skills, definitely. I mean, you'll hopefully you're learning new skills through these trainings. But then also, and I think I mentioned this before, but you know, having a, pres a present at a conference, um, being a speaker, having them, um, you know, go to a public um, you know, like a, a you know, a service meeting, uh, things like that, and doing that mentoring and that teaching, and then those online opportunities, you know, I was looking here on social media, doing a highlight of a volunteer, I love that, and then, as I said, too, serving on the committees, you know, on a board, things like that. 
So um, how about this? How about if I launch my our second poll here? And let's take a look. I'm gonna launch that. I think I meant to do that a little early, but why don't you go ahead and take a moment to answer that if you can. I'm gonna look here at the chat. Yeah, it's interesting. Many are saying that the organization needs to develop a plan. And you know, and rightly so, there's no shame in this whatsoever. But the thing of it is, is that the pandemic is a game changer for many of us. Um, we have traditions in our organizations. Yep. We offer multiple ways of formally and informally. And that makes a lot of sense because that is what the the survey said is that nonprofits are really very good at doing that personal thank you, which is awesome. We offer mostly informal in terms of saying things. Okay, that's fair enough. I'm gonna end this and share the results here. Yeah, um, so getting to that point of developing a plan, some of those materials that I'm gonna send out uh, will help you with that. And then, there are some tips and tools kind of for self-assessments and some surveys that you can share with your volunteers. And I would, I would definitely say definitely get a perspective from your team, your, your staff team and your volunteer team. Uh, look who your stakeholders are, involve them. And don't forget about your tra traditions. I mean, if they all love the tradition of a banquet, I think, you know, hey, that's okay, but you need a new approach. Um, I would also say on the banquets, something that was really meaningful to me was that I think a lot of times for some of the volunteers going and having like a fancy banquet, it's their only time that they get to do that. Uh, I worked with a lot of volunteers that they really look forward to that throughout the year. It was a big social thing. So you find out from your volunteers. You all uh, offer multiple ways to formally and informally recognize volunteers and feel like it's doing well. That one got the least amount, well, almost the least amount. Um, we offer mostly informal uh, recognition in terms of thanking volunteers and giving them opportunities to grow. Okay. Well, hey, I mean, that was about where I, I anticipated it would be, and that's okay. I think it's fair enough to know that uh, Things have changed in our world with, with the pandemic and it's okay if we need a, a new approach. So how does all of this help us? Well, I've kind of given you, and I put this lady up here with her hair like this because I think that's fair. I think a lot of times if we're not savvy about it, they could just be putting more things on our plate that we have to do. We have to order more mugs. We have to get them this. We have to do that. We have to put this event on. We have to send out a bunch of thank you cards. Um, but I would, I would want you to think about how can you have the most impact using the volunteers that you have and that you're facilitating it more than doing all the work. And so you're facilitating a um, culture of recognition versus being solely responsible for it. It should be on your staff, your co-staff people. Um, it should be on your leadership. It should be on everyone but your, and your volunteers. But you're also facilitating these things. Uh, so let's talk about that a little more. So if we can create a sense of belonging and engagement, what it does is it adds to your, your social fabric amongst your volunteers. And you know who would want to leave that? You know we have volunteers that, um, when this is done really well, and that sense of belonging, that's their network. I mean, as people have aged and things have happened, um, they still have a lot of skills to contribute. But you know, if they have someone who's at home who they're taking care of, mm -hmm. that person isn't emotionally there like they used to be. Uh, those opportunities to give volunteers. Um, they ultimately become responsible for creating that experience that, that is rewarding and you're facilitating it uh, and you're helping volunteers write their own engagement. 
And then we also have these opportunities. Ooh, I'm sorry. I don't know if you could see that, but um, we also have these opportunities to learn. Looking for the easy things at first, you know, if you have a trainer coming, I know I've mentioned this, but, um, you know, these trainings, it's perfectly okay to invite volunteers to them. Uh, ask volunteers what they'd like to do and steer them in ways that can help you, such as, would you like to learn interviewing skills? Would you like to help us, um, you know, process volunteer applications? It just depends on what works for your agency, but think about that, that you're not, it's not all on you, but you're a facilitator. So um, here's some ideas uh, when you're talking about ways that um, to connect recognition to motivations. Uh, when you're looking at this, oh my gosh. Um, so for social, it's again, it's that recognition from peer to peer. When I was talking about that STAR program, and and when I was when I was mentioning my um, my cousin with the rock crushing, I said, you know, the number one thing that they want, I mean, they want socialization, but they also want to be valued. And so I'll talk about that a little more. But the um, the exposure, the variety of assignments, and the training, and the reflection. And, you know, giving them that meaningful time to reflect upon, you know, the impact. Um, sometimes it, this is a good reflection. Sometimes it's a debriefing. You have some really great organizations out there that have some great policies and procedures in place to make this happen. And I think that's great. But it, those kind of things I, I think are really important. And then for enhancement, uh, these people are looking for a promotion and leadership development and power, but they need the experience to be kept positive. And that's, uh, there's always some, there's always some struggle with that, I think, if you're not careful about it, because um, you don't want someone there five days a week. And then all of a sudden, this thing that you were giving them some promotion and power it's become consuming to them. And then you start to see some negative behaviors come out. Um, so I, I would I would definitely put up boundaries about things and that it's not totally on them. Uh, protectiveness, you know, that reassurance, these folks are the kind of folks that need some reassurance, their contributions have meaning and it's in an emotionally supportive uh, setting. That could be things like, um, uh, you know, well, here's a great example. When we had um, babies in the NICU, for example, and we would have volunteers that would come up and they would hold babies. And, you know, sometimes um, most babies lived, but sometimes babies would get sick and something would happen. Um, there was there was always um, people like from our chaplain office that could do a debriefing and they would become very connected to these babies. And so that was, that could be a huge loss, but, um, but having that ability to kind of um, structure those kind of things. Now, not everybody's going to have that, but it can be kind of traumatic for some people who, you know, wanted a happy volunteer role and they're giving out food and they're seeing people who are, you know, really struggling and they're hearing their stories, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about, that they need some emotionally supportive settings for that. And then those that want to share their values, connecting to the mission and the personal values, it comes down to meaningful work. And that's often the case it is for most. Um, I want to touch just briefly and take a look at the time here, uh, being very careful on the forms of recognition, that peer recognition is extremely important. Publicity, we have our Michigan Heroes nomination. Uh, there's you know, opportunities in local media and social media to promote volunteers, maybe one volunteer, maybe all your volunteers. And then, uh, you know, giving them those opportunities that we've talked about. Uh, where they create a sense of influence. And then the responsibilities, you know, you have to have an appropriate amount of support and training to make those responsibilities meaningful and successful, investing in them. And then also food, who doesn't love food? Uh, that goes back to, uh, that goes back to uh, that lady that did all that banking <laughs> and, and they just absolutely love that. So, and, and I've talked about this, about thinking about your traditions and evaluating them. 
you know, with the pandemic, maybe this is a good time to evaluate those things. Maybe it isn't possible to bring everybody back together, or maybe it is and you just do it in a different way. But I would, I would think about those traditions, but I would always do them with your volunteers if you're going to make changes and do them with your stakeholders, do them with your leadership, do them with your staff. You know, how, how do volunteers want to be recognized if there are events, who participates? And then you have to think about, you know, it doesn't still work for us. Um, and then how do they feel about these activities? There were um, different organizations, at different organizations that I worked in, we had different, uh, different traditions. And some of them, there's no way that we were ever going to let some of those go. But some of them, yes, we could change. Uh, but we always, when we did that, we would do that with our volunteers. I wanted to put these resources up to about how do you highlight some of your volunteers and remind you that National Volunteer Week's coming up, April, I think it's April 17th to the 23rd. Uh, we have our Michigan Heroes nomination. That is the website. We would love to have volunteers from every single community uh, recognized here. It doesn't have to be a huge thing that someone has done. It can just be like they've been a great volunteer and, you know, they just are there for us. That's totally okay. But some other things that I think have been kind of cool, and I put these on here, I'm not going to read through all of them, but some of the more fun things that we've done, like I made a jib jab once with our staff and we were saying thank you and, you know, happy holidays. And our volunteers love that. And it was the easiest thing we ever did. Now, my kid, who is now 20, just rolled her eyes and she said, this is old. This is really old. Nobody likes this, but they loved it. Another fun thing that we did was we actually held a car wash for our volunteers and they drove through and, you know, we gave them pizza. This team washed their cars outside. Hey, that could still happen. It was a ton of fun for the staff. It was a ton of fun for the volunteers. And we just, you know, they loved it. Now, does that work for everyone? Probably not, but there was food and it was fun. There was music and everybody was happy. And then, um, and then another thing that we did uh, that I've done that was really kind of cool is we've had a long-term volunteer and we would do a memory box. And in this box, all the volunteers that they've worked with have put in a personal note, a memory that they shared, something that was important to them about that person. And I heard from the family later that that was so absolutely impactful. And so it doesn't have to be huge, huge things, but it could be, it could be little things that make a difference. And those tend to be the things that I think people are, um, people love. So I'll, you'll see these in the slides, but you know, the bottom line is however you celebrate volunteers, just make it personable, make it meaningful to them. That's, that's the biggest thing. And then um, we do, I'm going to also um, launch my very, very last poll here. Oh, let's see. Here is my last poll. And this is just um, to kind of wrap things up. And then I'm going to turn over to the, um, I'm going to turn over to the uh, chat and wondered if you had any questions, if you had some thoughts that you'd like to share. And you're all so generous today, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it just another moment where I keep this open. But in the chat, if there's anything you'd like to hear more about, or if there's um, some resources that we can send your way. I've got a few things that I know I'm going to send to you. Uh, one is like an e-tool kit by uh, Best Einhorn. And then I've got a few more things that I'm going to share. I'm going to end the poll and I can share those results with all of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, for that. Let me switch over to the chat here. Yeah, you will receive the PowerPoint and the recording as well. I do try to, uh, what I try to do on the delay is, is that um, we put it on our YouTube and I give you the YouTube uh, connection and our, I don't know how to do that. And so uh, the guy that helped me get, uh, my, my coworker that helps me on this, I've um, got to give him that. And I just was having some challenges with that. Um, I love the idea about a personal welcome uh, package. I love that. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? And you'll get that, Susan. Don't worry. Don't worry. I was just looking at the time here. And um, thank you. 
Well, I hope that everyone really enjoyed this. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone for being here. We will have, and I will put in the in the notes, the date of that network session, where I hope that we can all just come and learn and talk and um, just having a really fulfilling conversation about volunteer recognition, how to relaunch your volunteer program, things like that. So um, this is just really our goal is that we want to be able to connect with all of our hardworking volunteer professionals across the state. I know for a fact how needed you are and how tough it can be to get away to go to trainings and things like that. And so I just wanted to say thank you for making the time to be here and investing in you and investing in your volunteers. I think that's absolutely huge. With that, um, it doesn't look like there's any questions. I really appreciate you all being here. Um, I will work on that. We, I need to get the the link. I'm gonna. I'm going to. I need to get the link to you, and um, I'll pull these things together, and we'll get it out to you in the next day or so. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and end the meeting and stop our recording. But I wanted to again say thanks, and feel free to reach out to me if you do have any questions. These are our. Um, this is the email, my email, and then our website. So thank you so much. Bye, everyone.